Howdy gang, Dr. Doodle here again. Well, about a bazillion of years ago, I wrote a piece of code to allow QBasic programmers to use a mouse in their programs, not just in the editor, but in the actual programs they wrote. And you know, a while back I thought, hmm, it might be fun to share that online so other people can make use of it. So I did, I went to a website called Instructables, <coughs> wrote an article about how to use it, and uh, got a couple of complaints that uh, didn't really show how to use it once you, you've downloaded the software. So I thought I'd make this video to explain process how it works. All right, so here we go. Hang on just one moment while I uh, position the camera here. All right, now first step to doing this is to, uh, to use the mouse is to go to instructables.com where I've uploaded the article. And for those not familiar with it, we'll just click here, Instructables. Boom, we'll see. It's called Go. Oh, internet here is a little pokey. All right, Instructables.com. Now, this tells you all about technology, crafts, and home good foot goods, and things like that. Anyway, so we go here, we search how, oh, using. A mouse in QBasic. And you see this little icon right here or something similar pop up? Bang, this is my article here. Got the little mouse. It says, hmm, what's going on here? Anyway, using a mouse in QBasic programs. And it's three pretty simple steps, really. And this is the actual code that makes the program work. And you can just copy that into a, a file, which I'll explain in just a moment. But there's text, blah, blah, blah. You don't care about that. There's the code again. The first step is to download the files, which you'll find. Okay, mouse sub. This is the actual file that contains the code to use the mouse. Next is uh, QBasic mouse base, which is just a simple uh, sample program, as our buttons and Pong 3. Uh, so you download all of those programs, click next. You have chosen to open uh, Pong 3, which is a basic file. We'll save file just to show it's done. I've already saved these to the computer, but I don't need to do. Come on, Pokey Machine. All right, well, next we load the, the template file, and that's called mouse.sub. Now, if you notice, it does not have a base uh, extension, but SUB. I did that specifically so it won't show up with the rest of the basic files. This is to keep it from accidentally getting edited or erased. So what you'll do is you go to open, uh, type in mouse.sub and click OK. It'll open the file and then you can use the program. And let's see, next step, where is it? Oh, I mean, I'm just lost here. Ah, next. Okay, and this is editing the template file, which is the sub file. Okay, it says the first thing to do here is to change the name. Now you want to do that specifically so that if you should screw up and the file's not working, all of a sudden you've still got the original sub file so that you can just open that again, try again. So what you do is, is start a new program. Let's say you want to, well, I've got one called Pong for the, the typical uh, Pong program. So I'd save this file as pong.bas for basic. And that, well, as you noticed, uh, there were the three samples. One of them is called pong3, and I'll show those in a minute. Okay. Now this gives it ideas on how to actually write the code, but people are still a little, little confused by that. So what we'll do is we will open one of the sample files. Let me close this down. Boom. Computer's being poked tonight. QBasic. Now, if you notice it's looking a little strange, it's because I have to run QBasic through DOSBox, which I'm not going to get into DOSBox. That's a little more involved for this video. Now we'll go to File, Open, and Search through here. Uh, well, first of all, I should look show you the search for all dot. S U B 
you notice I've got a DSP that's for digital audio and the mouse sub that's you'll open this you'll see this here it says declare sub mouse funk and enter your code here this of course is where you would write your program but if you view subs go to mouse there's the actual subroutine I was explaining about right here and it's got three functions so if you call it a parameter one it displays the mouse cursor parameter two hides the mouse cursor and three reads the buttons and the coordinates so let's open one of the example files start with the simplest which is if I can find it here do, 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 do. Oh, past it why am I not seeing it type B there we go now notice view subs we've got our mouse sub just as before this is a sub program that allows you to use the mouse it does so by calling a piece of machine code right here it says all these pokes pokes in machine code then code then calls absolute and reads the memory address where the data is saved don't worry what all that means we'll just view subs the main program and the way you use this is you declare the sub mouse and then funk that tells you what parameter tells the computer what parameter you'll be sending to it and screen mode if you want to use a different screen mode mouse one that shows the cursor now do and loop you should understand what they mean by now if you're you've had any experience with QBasic locate print buttons that shows the horizontal the, the buttons the horizontal and vertical coordinates select case B that's when you press a button B changes and case one if you press the left mouse button it'll, the B will then be one so it turns off the mouse reads where it is draws a line and then mouse one turns the cursor back on if you press the right button that's case two so it turns off the mouse cursor clears the screen and then turns the mouse back cursor back on and then case three if you happen to press both buttons exits the do loop and just exit the program so we'll run this and I'll explain what I'm talking about now all that is just DOS box doing its garbage alright if we look here we see horizontal and vertical coordinates notice this is button if I press the left button B is now one if I press the second it's two and if I press three well you'll or, sorry both buttons you'll see a three and the program will exit so when I press the left button it just draws a line wherever the mouse cursor happens to be the right button clears the screen and as I mentioned both buttons quits the program now again that we view the sub subs this is the sub that actually does the work once you've copied that into your program you don't need to worry about it so we go to this part here the main program this is where you write your actual code and again mouse 3 that reads what button if any is pressed where the mouse uh, X coordinate is or horizontal coordinate and the vertical coordinate so let's take a look at a little more advanced program file open and I'll show you buttons which is here this would be good for a menu type program we'll run this start good again DOS box doing its nonsense and if you notice we've got this uh, screen here with a, a blue red green and yellow button so if I click the red one the whole screen turns red green it turns green yellow yellow blue etc that's all this program does the idea being by clicking on a different button you can change the screen you could just as easily open a file close a file uh, you could put text in here saying open close exit what have you and then press escape to quit escape so let's see how this works. All right, view subs mouse. Again, we've got the actual mouse subroutine that does the work. We don't need to worry about that. It's like a black box to just leave it there and it does its own thing. So we def int that's define integer a through z that makes all the variables integer by default. Then you declare the subroutine for mouse and the func par parameter you send to it. This just initializes the program, sets up the various uh, colors, draws the screen, 
and then turns the mouse cursor on. All right, so then we go to the do loop, which is the main program. And if you notice, I've got this line uh, commented out, so it's inactive. But if I re-enable this, remove this comma, run again, start. And we'll see now we have the horizontal coordinates, the vertical coordinates, and which button is pressed. <laughs> but again, press escape to quit. Boom. Back to the code. And we'll comment that out again. We don't need it. So it's looping through the main program. And it says if B equals 1. That means if you press the left button. Then you select case V. It wants to know where the, the vertical coordinate is. is it above, like in the top two buttons or the bottom two buttons. If it's in the top two buttons, then it's either button one or two, and the background's one for blue or four for red. If it's the bottom two buttons, then it's either button three or four, which are yellow, I'm sorry, green and yellow. After it selects vertical position, or if it's decided that it's case 50 to 49, that means it's the top two rows, it then checks the horizontal position. Is it the left button or the right button? and it sets the background color accordingly. After, after it sets the background color, it then draws the screen again, and the, the, main, the full screen is drawn the color that is set by this function. I know that sounds confusing, but just look through it and you'll understand what it does. The whole point here is that there's three functions. Mouse three, that just reads whether the, what buttons are pressed or where the mouse is. There's mouse one, which, where'd that go? Uh, mouse one displays the cursor. Well, we saw that up here. Mouse one displays the cursor. And mouse two hides the cursor. Now, you might, might be wondering, why would we want to hide the cursor? I mean, if we're using the mouse, we kind of need, need to know where the cursor is, don't we? Well, yes, for a menu program, sure, you do need to know that. But it's not always helpful for something like a game. For instance, uh, open, we will go to Pong 3, and where are you Pong, I just saw, there it is, and run, start, again DOS box doing its nonsense, here we go, and we notice I move the, the mouse left and right and the paddle moves left and right, obviously you notice that you can't see the cursor. It would be pointless to have an arrow somewhere in the screen. It would just get in the way and block the view. So instead, we just check where the cursor is. Even though we can't see it, it's still there. And then move the paddle accordingly. So if the cursor happens to be to the left of the paddle, then the paddle moves left. If the cursor happens to be to the right of the paddle, it moves right. Now we click the mouse when ready. And of course, bounce just like a typical Pong game. You want to return the ball and oops the paddle's not there so we lose a life. Click the mouse again a few more points every time you return you get more points. Okay lose the mouse again or lose the ball again and lose a life. Now do we want to play again? If you notice the cursor is now on again because I need to know if I'm clicking on yes or no. Do we want to play again? Sure why not? Yes. Again, it hides the cursor. We don't need to see it for this game. Play our game. All right. Well, I'm a loser. I'm not particularly good. I've only got 10 points. And brings the cursor back up. Play again. Yes or no. This time, no. We don't want to play anymore. So I'll click the mouse to continue. And back to this code. It's quite a bit more complex as you might imagine, but it's just typical drawing images and uh, pasting, putting arrays, if you've worked with that at all for graphics. The point being, what you want to do is, at the beginning of the main routine, these are subroutines here, you want to do a loop, do and then loop, call mouse 3. Now every time you call mouse 3, again, it uh, right reads the button status and the X and Y coordinates. And you want to check this as you go through the loop each time so you know that the the coordinates are up to date and accurate. 
Uh, another point I need to mention as far as hiding the cursor. One thing you want to do is hide the cursor before you draw any graphics on the screen or, or uh, text or graphics because if you draw graphics over the cursor then move the cursor it'll be jumbled. Let me show you what I mean. Open buttons. Where are you? There you are. And let's see here. Find the subroutine. Uh, draw a screen. Okay, this is the, the part that turns off the mouse cursor. So we'll comment that out and disable it for the moment. Run, start, and DOS box doing its nonsense. Okay, we start up. Notice the cursor moving around, and if I click, notice right there. You see where it's got a gray spot there. That's because, and here again, yellow. It's because I left the, the cursor showing. I drew over top of it and then moved the cursor. And there's another good example. This is the type of, of gibberish you get if you don't turn the cursor off first. So you always want to make sure before you update the screen with text or graphics, you turn off the mouse cursor, draw your image, draw your text, and then turn the mouse cursor back on. And we'll press escape to exit. Bring that back up. So let's re-enable re that line there from mouse 2 to turn off the mouse cursor. Another line you may notice down here it says case 170 to 200 exit 2. We'll enable that. What that does is every time through the loop it checks the vertical coordinate. Is it in the top row or is it in the bottom two rows? But if it's below both of them, then it's case 170 to 200. 170 to 200. And if you click there, then it ends the program. So, start it again. Again, we start with blue, red, yellow, green, whatever color you want to select. But now, if I press escape here, boom, it exits the program. So you could conceivably put a quit button there. Just click on the quit button, game's over or the program's over, more or less like a, a, a Windows program. So we'll re-comment that out because we don't need it. Run once more, and again you get the point. Here we go for a menu type program. This could be open file, close file, um, edit, whatever, what have you, quit. Any com comment you want or command you want to put in there, you could put four or five buttons vertically, horizontally, however you want to do it. Basically, the, the process is you check. Well, let me just re enable the one line here, which is right here. Run, start. All right, now notice we've got our coordinates. So we want to decide what's going to happen if we click the blue button. Well, if it's from 50 to 99 pixels down from the top, then that's the top row. If it's 100 to 149, that's the bottom two buttons. And the uh, X, sorry, horizontal coordinate, if it's from 118 to 318, then it's one of the left buttons. If it's 320 to 522, then it's one of the right buttons. So the idea is when you click the mouse on any of these buttons, the program checks the coordinates to find out is it the top two, is it the bottom two, left two or right two. That's how it knows which command to execute. In this case, it sets the background color to blue, and there it is. Here, it knows it's the top button, right button, top right button. When I click it, it turns red. I hope that this was not too confusing, but I think that if you mess with the basic, uh, sorry, the simple QB mouse program, which is one of the samples that I, I originally concluded with the uh, the code. Where is QB a QB mouse? There it is. Boom. It should be simple enough that you can figure out. Again, DOSBox doing its nonsense. Should be figured simple enough that you can figure out what's going on. I mean, change start by changing around uh, the color of, of the line. Change screen mode. See what that does. 
and here's all the code for it. Again, the, the subroutine mouse is kind of hidden away in its own little pocket. That's what does the heavy lifting, the actual work of, of accessing the code, the mouse. And you don't need to worry about that at all. It's it's just it back in the background doing its thing. So we go to the main sub, which is the main program here. You declare the sub mouse func, which this is all part of the template, so you don't even really have to put that line in there either. Set the screen mode, turn the mouse on, and then this is the main program here, do and loop. Check the coordinates, check the buttons before anything else. This just uh, prints the buttons. Oh, I'm sorry, that prints the coordinates on screen, which we don't need because we know where they are now. That's just when you're actually writing the program, you'll want to know the coordinates. But once you've got it working, you can delete that line. You don't really need it. Select case B. That's if the button has been pressed. In the case of the left button, then you... Uh, hide the cursor so as not to, to garble the screen uh, read the coordinates again draw a line in yellow then show the cursor again now if it's case 2 where you press the right button then you hide the mouse cursor clear the screen display the mouse cursor again and then case 3 that's when you've pressed both buttons exit 2 it just drops out to, to the end of the loop and and ends the program. Exit do down here. Mouse two that turns off the mouse cursor. Clear screen. Prints finito, which doesn't need to be there. And then system ends the program. So that should be simple enough to give you a starting point and how to use the mouse cursor. Again, only three functions: display the cursor. And remember, just because you can see the cursor does not mean the computer knows where it is. You have to call mouse three to read where the button or which buttons are pressed where the horizontal and the vertical coordinates are that's how the program knows where the mouse cursor is so function one mouse one that turns on the cursor mouse two turns off the cursor and mouse three reads the buttons reads the coordinates should be all you need and if you uh, if you have any questions or problems, just want to bitch at me for something, go ahead, feel free to leave comments. Guess that's all I got for now. So you guys take care and see you later. Bye bye.